always say that. I, that's because I don't want to say, hey. Uh, a lot of people say, hey, at the beginning. So throughout my classes, I always throw out what we call gold nuggets. Gold nuggets are things that I see happen in real estate that something you should really know that happens in real estate. Or maybe something that happens in your real life that you're like, oh my gosh, I remember that happening to me and I don't ever want it to happen again or stuff like that. So gold nug nuggets are like life lessons and real estate lessons. Hello, Arlene, how you doing? Isn't this just the coolest, the gray with the gray? Anyway, so I wanted to get on and just see if I can get some time on here with this book that I've been working out of the practice book. So we tried this before and we did the principles book. And the reason I'm doing this is a lot of you students, you take your three classes and it's really hard to pass the final because it's super easy to take a class online and just press the button and press the button and keep going forward and get past the exam. And then you're ready to take the real estate exam at the end of your class for your class final and you can't get past it because you really didn't learn anything. So hello there, how you doing? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through we went through the principles book. I didn't finish it all the way. And if anybody wants me to finish principles, just put it in my chat and I'll do it. It just was getting so long and tedious because a lot of the stuff in these books, I hate to say it, we don't do real estate that way anymore. However, it is on the state exam and it's on your national exam. So you do have to know it. So I'm going through the practice book. And then I, since I already did the principles, I might add some of that, but then I'm going to go into the national exam prep because a lot of people take the national exam prep and they still have a hard time passing. The reason our students pass the state exam so well is because I teach people very clearly, very understandable. I mean, honestly, a 13 year old could pass the state exam for real estate with my teaching because I make sure you understand it as we go every step of the way. In fact, tomorrow morning at 8.30, we're starting our state exam for California. It's at 8.30 to five and it will go on Saturday and Sunday and then we'll start again in the evening. So the other thing that we do that most other schools don't do, so not only do I do this class for free for you, of course you don't get credit, but you get a really good education. Um, when we do our cram course, a lot of people have crazy schedules. I mean, I know I have a crazy schedule. And if you have a crazy schedule, it's really, really hard to get into a cram course or an exam prep or any kind of focus when you know you have to run off to work or you have to run off to a wedding or whatever you have to do on the weekend. So what we do is we do the class on the weekend and then we repeat it during the week. And you can take our class three times and all you really need is once to pass your state exam. What I've also noticed is the national exam is actually easier than the California state exam. And I'm told that the Texas exam is one of the hardest ones along with Nevada. So those are the two harder ones that you might have to study extra for. And I'm looking into getting my Georgia license. So go, on, go along with me on the way. So we've been doing, we've already done two of the classes out of practice. And it's interesting because Arlene and I talked, Arlene is my business partner, and we talked about doing a video because a young lady from our class called us and she said, oh my gosh, I have my first interview with a broker today. And I'm like, that's so cool. She's like, I really need to ask you a bunch of questions. Well, mm, you know, we have so much to do because Arlene and I are both acting agents. We literally, she has an offer in on a property and I have two listings. And so when you're an active agent and you're running around like crazy and somebody calls you and goes, wait, and just calls you in the middle of your day, um, we do need to schedule time for that. So I told her, I said, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video on what to do when you're um, being interviewed by a broker. I hate that I said, um, but anyway, being interviewed by a broker. However, I'm still going to make that video. It still will be available on our website. So we have a video called, I got my license. What do I do? And we are doing mortgage loan classes also. So if you want to be a loan officer, a lot of the places you work at will require you both your loan license and your real estate license. So it's really important to get that real estate license. If you don't use it at all, and all you use it for is to help yourself buy a home, especially in the way that real estate is going to be in the future, you might want to have your license so you can negotiate for yourself um, or have somebody that's a broker that can help you and you have your license. But anyway, today's class in this book, this is Walt Hubbard's book. It's actually very affordable. On my first video about this book, I have how you can get this book. So it's Walt Hubbard's book. I'm only on page six, and I think I ended up actually on page four, but 
On page four, it started talking about broker interviews and what you should look for and how you should decide which broker you want to um, go ahead and interview with. And one of the things that it starts with was something that I, you know, I thought about, but then I really didn't think about because to me, um, it's not something that I look for, but it may be something in the book it says you should look for is when you're interviewing a broker, one good source, it says, is personal referrals. Now that I agree with. Personal referrals, maybe somebody you know works at a real estate office. Maybe you're in a um, chamber of commerce where you go to the, the chamber meetings for your city or your, or your local neighbors and you're going to meetings. Ask them, you know, do you know any real estate agents and do you know who they work for or do you know any brokers that have an office? Office. because brokers are always always looking for new agents and the reason is it is a numbers game and I might have said that in one of the prior videos for this class but it is a numbers game so when you sign up to take your real estate exam they release a list for free to all the brokers who are looking to find new agents and that's a lot of them and there's usually about a thousand to twelve hundred people who are getting ready to take their real estate exam every single week in California. In fact, we looked it up and it was about 1,100 that signed up recently. So there's a lot of people taking the test and what brokers do is they search for you at the same time you're searching for them. However, um, in the book it says, you know, personal referrals from buyers, sellers, and other agents who are placing their service with um, who you've done with. So you, I'm sorry, who, who I can't talk, who you've worked with. So maybe you purchase your home obviously through a real estate agent, or maybe you sold a home or maybe your parents sold a home and you really like that real estate agent's service. And you ask them, call them up and ask them, you know, you did a really good job when you sold my parents' home or you, or you did a really good job when you helped me find my home. Do you, re um, do you recommend the brokers, you know, the broker's agency that you work for? And, you know, what do you think about me coming in and getting an interview? Can you connect me up? So referrals are always, always, always the best because they already kind of have an introduction to you. So it makes it a lot easier to go on in there. But even if you have a referral, before you go into the broker's office, you really should research their office. I mean, what I would like to do and what I tell my students to do and what it says right here in the book is look for people who have a good reputation. Look for people who have agents all around town. I mean, when you drive around the area that you want to sell homes in, whose signs do you see the most? Do you see ABC Real Estate? Do you see Keller Williams? Do you see Compass? Who's the most predominant agency in the area that you're going to be selling homes? And you need to make a decision where you wanna sell homes because if you wanna sell homes down the street and around the corner, that's great. But if you wanna sell homes in a city that's 45 minutes away, you might think of relocating yourself, but before you relocate, find a broker that will hire you. Now, like I said, it's a numbers game. So most of the time what they're doing is they're looking for anyone they can get that's a live person that has a license that next we're gonna talk about dresses appropriately. I look perfectly like a real estate agent today. I have my blouse on with my jacket and usually I wear my name badge. So you wanna go in there looking professionally. And so let's see, it says, also, like I said, a reputation, find a brokerage that has a good reputation and um, see if you can get an appointment. It said, observe real estate signs and advertising in your area. So like I said, maybe drive around the neighborhoods that you want to sell homes in and see what your competition is and see who they work for. You might even want to see if you can work for the same office so that you can maybe see if they have a team and make a decision if you want to be on a team versus being a single real estate agent working by yourself. It says also, the majority of buyers and sellers will have shopped on the internet prior to buying or selling a home. So buyers and sellers look on the internet also. So if they see a company that's predominant, they may, hey, how you doing, Ellie? They may want to um, you know, go to a brokerage that's over there. But I do wanna make sure, this is not in the book, but I wanna make sure I tell you this, is what's really interesting is a lot of people think I need to go to ABC Real Estate, or I need to go to Keller Williams, or I need to go to Compass. I need to go to a big name real estate place because, hi there, how you doing, Jocelyn? Hi. So, um, you know, a lot of people think they have to go to a big name real estate office in order to get any business, and that's absolutely not true. And to be honest with you, I have seen some agents that work at big name real estate companies that really do, do not follow the rules of real estate, how you're supposed to do it. And one of the good examples is I was working with another real estate agent. You're COVID free. Yay. Congratulations. It sucks to go through COVID, doesn't it? 
I think I went through it last year in the summertime, and I was sick for a good six to eight weeks. It's just not fun. So I'm going to try to stick to the book on, um, because we're trying to get through this book, Practice, because we're teaching you the practice of real estate. However, I do want to share stories of real life and what happens. So if you've gone through all your education and you, and you know what you're doing, and you start working with somebody, I'm getting ready to take your test, yay, in three weeks. You want to take my class one last time before you come? Make sure you email Arlene. There's Arlene. It says, hello, Arlene. Um, make sure you email her because we're teaching this weekend. Uh, Saturday and Sunday at 8.30 a.m. We'll probably get out a little early tomorrow. I haven't broken this to Arlene, but I do have to go to an event tomorrow. Um, and then we'll do all day Sunday. And then we're going to repeat the class again. Your friend Jackson is here too. Jackson is always with you. Hi, Jackson. How you doing? So um, Monday at 6 p.m. to 9.30, we'll do Monday through Thursday, and then you guys should be ready. You really honestly only have to take our class once to pass. However, if you were studying someone else's material, there's a lot of people out there with a lot of bad material. I'm literally going through real estate practice, and I went through real estate principal here live for you. He wants to be a real estate agent too. Well, then he needs to take the class, right? So that would be awesome. And where are you guys at? Ellie, what city are you guys in? Aren't you up north? I wish you could come down here and be with us because we like really train our people because it's really interesting. Like I was going to say, I was working with an agent from LA area and she was sending me some contracts and she would send me a contract and I would look at it and I go, okay, so you did it wrong. You did it incorrectly. Can you please fix it? She goes, are you ready for what she said? This is a real estate agent from LA who says that she's a top agent. And she said, can't you just sign it the way it is? And then I'll go ahead and fix it later. And I said, absolutely not. And the other thing that I saw her doing is she was sending contracts to the seller without having them review it first. And I know she did that because she had the wrong listing price. I'm like, did he reduce his listing price? So, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that pretend that they know what they're doing and they don't. So you guys will be one step ahead of everybody else when you know what you're doing. And when you first get started, like this says, interview your broker. Look for somebody who has signs up. Look for people who are working there and maybe even call them. I mean, that's what I did when I went on an interview with a brokerage. I went on the interview. I actually went back for a second interview. They hired me and they wanted me to take a test. So I took an aptitude test, which I thought was pretty fun. And it was funny because my friend went with me and she took the test and she failed. I forgot to tell that story once or twice, right? So anyways, after I got hired, they gave me the contract. You guys read your contract. I don't know how to say that a hundred times more over because the contract they gave me wasn't what they told me. And unfortunately, I decided to make the decision not to work for them. After I saw the contract, and this is what this says, talk to other real estate agents that work for those companies. Because honestly speaking, um, I called the, one of the guys that was the top agent at that office and I said, hey, I'm getting ready to join your company. I'm just wondering how you feel about the company, how, um, how, you, how much they help you, how much their mentorship is. And I said, I see you've done a lot of deals in a short period of time. And he said, yes, I have. But let me tell you something. They don't pay you what they say they're going to pay you. So um, I love that you send back the contract. I know you have to send back the contract. So let me explain to you how the Department of Real Estate, that's a little bit off base, but this is how we do real estate today and not on the state exam. And it should be on the state exam. So what we do, because everything is electronic, it used to be that we would sit in front of the client, write out the offer if you're working with the buyer or if you're working with the seller, write out the listing contract, explain the whole contract to them, go over it with them, and make any changes that they require while you're sitting in front of them. Then they sign the contract, we would pull it apart, and we'd have carbon paper in between, and then we would keep our copy and the copy that we're gonna submit to the other side, and we would give them a copy immediately. That is on the state exam. You do have to give anything that anyone signs has to go to them immediately. That's how it's on the test. Now in the real world right now, what we have is a thing called zip forms. What zip forms are, is there forms that are free to you as a California, um, as a member of the California Association of Realtors. So the zip forms are in their website. So what happens is you go into their website, it's car.org, and then you go to your zip forms. And that's how you fill out all your forms. Once your forms are filled out, what you do is you email them over to your client. 
What I do, which makes sure I'm so compliant with the DRE, it's ridiculous. What I do is I tell my clients, watch for your contract and let me know what time I can go over the contract with you. And then what we'll do is I'll send you a Zoom link and they see me just like you see me and I Zoom them in and we go through the contract line by line and I explain it to them. If they don't have that kind of time, I'll say, why don't you review it when you can? And then when you're done reviewing it, let's go over the main portions. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to talk to me about it. And then what they'll do is if there's any changes, they'll email it back to me. I'll make the changes. I'll give it back to them and I'll say, okay, I've made the changes. Are you happy with the contract? Is there anything else we have to go over? Whether you're a listing contract or it's a purchase contract, you need to go over the contracts and know them. So once they come back, then I say, okay, are we ready to sign them? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through DocuSign. So you'll see a form come through DocuSign and the DocuSign will have them authenticate every place where they need to sign. Once they have signed it and all parties have signed it, so that would be if it's a listing, that would be myself and them. If it's a purchase, it would be, again, myself and them. And then we would submit it to the other side. Now, if the other side accepts it, then we would send it to DocuSign for them to go ahead and sign it. And we explain everything, every step of the way. If your agent is not doing that, they're not compliant with the DRE, which is the Department of Real Estate. And they really should be, I'm sorry, it should be addressed. And if you don't want to turn them into the Department of Real Estate, you really should find out who their association of realtors are. And you should go ahead and put in a complaint because their job is to make sure that you understand the contract and to make sure that you get the best deal that you possibly can in the easiest, smoothest manner. Because this is the biggest investment in their life. And you sure don't want to scare them or make them get cold feet and feel uncomfortable. You're there for them. So that was a really good long one, wasn't it? So anyways, as on page four and page five, if you're going to follow along with um, the practice, it's the 10th edition with um, Walt Hubbard. This is a really great book because what they do with Walt Hubbard, especially the principles book, they go through every step of the way that you need to understand. And if you signed up for an online class and you don't understand anything, it's up to you. It's your career. If it's your career and you really want to learn this stuff, I would get Walt Hubbard's books and then I would take my cram course, my exam prep, which is just about every weekend. If it's not every weekend, we do show up at least every other weekend. And if we didn't do it on the weekend, we'll do it during the week. But we are adding another class, you guys. We're adding the MLO class. That's the mortgage loan originators. We're adding their exam prep class next month. I believe it's on the 20th or the 21st. It's on the Monday through Thursday, same time we do the real estate exam. And it's 6.30 to 9, I mean, it's 6 o'clock to 9.30 p.m. So 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. We're going to be doing it next month. And before you take that class to take your exam, you need to take a 20-hour course. It's one 20-hour course to become an MLO. Now, the test is about seven times harder than the real estate test, but it's worth it. If you don't want to go through all that, but you under, want to understand the mortgage process, we are making a video called Understanding the Mortgage Process. So we are here for you guys every step of the way. And we want to make sure that your real, career, your real estate career is, is as profitable and amazing as mine has been for over 35 years. I did say that, 35 years. So I bought my first property as an investor. That really wasn't my real estate career, but it kind of was because I was investing in real estate before I was 20. So I bought my first one when I was 18. Um, that was somewhere around 1979. And then I bought my next one and my next one. And by the time I was 24, I was living in my forever home and I'm still in my forever home. So I'm telling you guys, this is a career that will go on and on, even with the NAR changes. That's the National Association of Realtors. The changes are not going to hurt us. They're going to make us better. And the real estate agents that are great are going to become greater. And the real estate agents that are part time are going to fall off because this really is not a part time job. If you're looking to buy a home or sell a home or you're looking to get your real estate license this is a full-time job because it's not fair to your clients to be in a classroom teaching at, at an elementary school or working at the grocery store or doing someone's hair when your client needs you because that's just not cool so 
Let's go on to see if there's anything else on these pages, because I want to get through this book some year, I guess, right? Um, but I did see the questions and answers. And what I might do is start skimming through the book and then go through the questions and answers to help you get through the book faster, because this is the practice book, and it's the new one that you have to do in order to get your real estate, um, to get one step further, because what you have to do is you have to sign up for your real estate exam, and you need three classes to sign up for your real estate exam, and this is one of them. So if you're having problems with it, I'm here to help you you. And if you have questions about um, your real estate principles class or your real estate, even your um, elective class, because I've taught those, I've taught principles, practice, um, escrow and title, and mortgage and real estate, um, real estate law. So all those classes, if you're getting to the final in your class and you can't get through that final, let me know because I'll tell you a couple of ways to get past that final and you'll get past it and then you can take our exam prep and you can pass the licensing test and get your license because that's what we're here for, like I said. So to sign up for our class, because a lot of people ask to sign up for our class, um, just go ahead and I hate, Arlene hates when I do this, but I know that some of our students have been having a hard time getting to the wrong website. And so if you text me directly at 714-745-6348, I'll send you the link to sign up for our class. Now I know in our comments, I actually had a student ask me because she wanted to sign up. It was about 10 hours ago. She wanted to sign up for the exam prep and she's like, I don't know where to go. And I gave her my phone number in the comments so that I could send her the link to sign up for our class. You can also sign up for our class off of my Instagram page. And my Instagram page is Sharon Butler, super easy, one R, S-H-A-R-O-N, Butler, like the butler did it, B-U-T-L-E-R, dot, right? R-E pro, stands for real estate professional. So um, let's get anything else in here. So today we talked about your interview with the broker. One of the things I don't think I mentioned was, and I wanna go on to the next page, was um, you're interviewing them just as much, if not more than they're interviewing you because this is a life change for you. And when you go into that office, you wanna know, you know, if you wanna go to an office and you wanna be around those people, is this an atmosphere you like? Do you like the person interviewing you? And I'm guessing you probably won't even meet the broker. And I would ask about that. You know, how often does the broker show up? And and will I, and who's going to support me? And who's going to help me learn this and mentor me? And how am I going to learn this business of real estate? Because honestly speaking, you guys, I really, I love new agents and I love to put them under my license. But what I don't like about it is they don't understand that most offices don't even give them the support that I give them. And I go... I walk you through every step of the way, every deal that you have. For the first three deals, we go through them three times. So I explain what you're supposed to do, then I have you do it, and then we review it. And that's what all your offices should do to make sure you understand what you're doing. Because if you don't know what you're doing, then how are you helping somebody with the most expensive investment in their life? So I know there's a bunch of gold nuggets in this video. That's what Arlene calls them. It's really important things that I mention about real estate that really, really works for you. And I'm so glad that you guys are here watching because I was wondering on Friday night how many people are going to actually come on and learn some stuff. So, and I know that the video will be up there and you guys can learn more stuff, but make sure, like I said, you interview them and ask them a lot of questions. Now, one of the things I said on my last video was somebody asked me, well, what if I picked an office and they're not doing what they're said they're doing? Well, then they're not being honest with you. And you need to go back to them and say, hey, you know, I don't want to jump around offices, but when I did the interview with you, um, you stated that you were going to do this, 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 and this, and I've been sitting around for the last two weeks doing nothing, and I need some help. You guys, you have to be vocal, and, and it's good to practice being vocal because you're going to have to be vocal with your clients, too. Um, so it says, I've been an agent for months with EXP, and I'm still lost. I am so sorry, Larry. Um, where Where is this EXP office that you're at? What city are you in? How far are you? Um, and let me tell you, um, at EXP, do you have a mentor? Because I know most of the time they give you a mentor. In fact, Arlene, my business partner, she is she was at EXP for a while. And they have to give you some kind of step-by-step, -step, something that you can do. I know you're in California, Larry, but we're at Southern California, Northern California, or Central California. Um, but anyway, 
There's a couple of things that I do and I talk about on my video. I got my license. What do I do? Now, that was a class, and a class, I got my license, what do I do? Whenever we do the class, it's kind of hit or miss because people can't schedule the same time we schedule them. So we decided to put it as instant access. Oh, you're in Northern California. We have so many students in Northern California. Um, but one of the first things I want to say to you is um, if they promised you that they were going to help you, then you need to go into your manager and or the person you interviewed with and say, you know, I really like EXP. I like what they stand for. I like their name. That's why I joined it. But when I interviewed with you, you said that I'd have a mentor or you said that, you know, there are some videos I could watch. What can I do to get started? Because I'm really feeling like I'm sitting here doing nothing and see what they say. You might want to also get my video. I hate to promote my video, but it's called, I got my license. What do I do? I have some really great ways about halfway through the video, maybe even a little farther than halfway, we talk about how to get leads. And there's so many ways to get leads. It's ridiculous. But mm, I think I'll give you a gold nugget because you're there. So a gold nugget to get leads. One of the best ways to get leads is go shopping. And I don't mean go really shopping, although I always go shopping. Um, I have some stuff in a bag still. I bought some shoes because I have this thing about wearing sparkly shoes. So um, I went shopping and Arlene, my business partner, lives like not that far from me, but right by her house, there's a great Marshalls. And I was at the Marshall, I was at that Marshalls and I go shopping for clients, but I also, when a, when a class is coming up, um, when somebody starts talking to me and they have a great personality, I'll tell them, you know, having your real estate license is an amazing career and you have a great personality and you might want to consider it. And I did that with this one young lady and she had the greatest, greatest personality and she was beautiful. And I said, you know, the other thing that we haven't got into in this book yet, but you're, you, you really have to dress the part too. And I had students come up to me that I hate to say they have an odor or something's going on there. And, you know, you really have to think about that, you know when you're going out in the public and when you're talking to clients. So obviously I don't know you, so I don't know how you dress, but when you go shopping for clients, you don't have to, you, you can you can be comfortable, like wear like a sweatsuit. Well, you're a guy, so you can be comfortable in a nice semi-casual outfit, you know, just like not, I wouldn't say business, but business casual and just go out and about. In fact, one of the things I told somebody to do, which I'll give you too, is um, in my video, it speaks more about that. But one of the best ones that happened was we had a student that, you know, he asked me what he should do to interview, which was today's lesson, interviewing with a broker. Make sure you dress the part. Um, you already have EXP, so you're already at a broker. Hi, good job. Good job, Larry. Um, but anyway, um, also questions that you need to ask your broker is what association do you belong to? And are there different, different associations I can choose from depending on where I'm located? So lots of information there um, because it goes from interviewing your broker to learning about your association. If you're new in the business and, and or you have not signed up for your association yet, it is gonna cost you a minimum of probably, depending on what time of year you sign up, it's gonna cost you at least $1,000. Because if you sign up in January, it's honestly about $1,300. And then if you do a donation to the RPAC, which is the Real Estate Action Fund, and we really need to build that action fund because we're fighting for our careers, um, Stuff that you want to learn and that you want to know before you go into an office, plus what you should say in the office. But really, really um, inside this book right here where I'm at, not only does it talk about the broker interview, but it also talks about making sure that you're educated on who works for them, who are the top agents who work for them, who is the broker, will I ever see the broker. Um, you're interviewing them, like I've said a couple times, just as much as they're interviewing you. So look the part, look like a real estate agent, right? Uh, but like I said, again, if they're not doing what they said they were going to do, it's very easy to switch brokers. All you do is interview with other brokers, talk to other agents, ask them how much help they've gotten and if they love their office and ask them, do you, are you just saying this because you love your office and I really should come work for there? Or I hate to say this, are you getting a commission off of me or some kind of benefit because I'm going to come there? And you have to be direct about that because I know some of the offices give you, you know, part of somebody else's um, commission. So you really, really want to make sure you get with the right place because you don't want to start jumping around once you start building your brand. Because if jump around in the beginning, 
then get your brand built and then get referrals because referrals are going to be the the sweetest way to get business in this industry because if you help somebody and you do a great job what they're going to do is tell somebody else and somebody else and it's going to be like a snowball effect and you'll build your career as you go you know paying for leads and referrals is probably really not the best way to go um, you're going to build relationships so, so what i was going to say for my exp guy is i told this one student who had the same problem you have um, first of all, you're going to learn every step of the way. Once you have a client, that EXP office is going to jump all over you and want to help you. I promise you. So you got to get a client. The best way to get a client, get out and about. Like um, I just said earlier today, um, Chamber of Commerce, um, your, city, your city meetings, go out and meet people, go to networking events. One of our students was really bummed out like you and he went to a networking event, met somebody, it was a buyer. He ended up selling him a home that was $850,000. So that was probably probably a minimum of a $15,000 commission. So you got to get out there. You got to meet people. You got to talk to people. You got to let everybody know you're a real estate agent. Another thing I tell people to do, get a shirt that says, ask me. And on the back, I'm a realtor or hashtag real estate. Um, anything that you can do to let people know that you're a real estate agent and you want to help them. So again, today we're working out of the practice book. I was up to page four when I started and I went through broker interviews and how you're going to get an interview with a broker. You're going to look for people. That's just a summary of it. You're going to ask them about their association because that's on the next page and it tells you how much it's going to cost to join the association. And I went and gave you way too much information today. Tomorrow we're going to start on page six. If we do it tomorrow, oh, we're not going to do it tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. And tomorrow I'm teaching the exam prep that starts at 8.30 and goes to five o'clock and it does the same thing on Saturday. If you have any questions at all, put them in my comments and I will answer your questions. And even if it's a question on maybe something that you have to do that you don't know if I know it or not, if it has to do with real estate, I know it pretty much. If I don't know it, I'll find out for you. Arlene and I are going to be keeping adding classes and keeping you guys educated. We're going to be doing a flipping class as soon as we get done with the houses that we have listed and the houses we have in escrow. We're going to um, try to find a house that we can flip and you can follow us every step of the way. So like I said, comments would be great. If you're not subscribed to me, please go ahead and subscribe. All I do is give you guys valuable information and I will keep you up to date on the NAR lawsuits as I learn things. So something new happened today that I'm going to find out about and we'll keep you posted on it and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. I need help on passing the exam. How do I register? Okay, so what you want to do, Arlene, can you, are you still there? Because Arlene has the registration link. Uh, I know that I've tried to send the link out to people and they went to the wrong website, but the best way to register, just text me. 714-745-634. Uh, oh, are you going to be in Sacramento? Yes, you are. So, okay, so it's 745-6348. If you text me, I'll send you the link to sign up for tomorrow, tomorrow's class. We teach the class and you're able to take it up to three times before you take the exam. And we make sure our students pass. In fact, our brokers are passing, which is amazing. Everybody that's a, that has taken our class to become a broker, we give them additional material and they take the same class as the real estate class because it's the same questions and they're all passing. That's why we're adding the MLO class to help mortgage loan originators get their license. So you guys have a great weekend. If you need us, call us, text us. We're here for you and I look forward to the next class. Hopefully I'll be back on Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye. I've, I always do that. I just put my finger up there. It looks terrible.